Hi everyone, welcome back to Julie's Roots and Shoots. I'm Julie, and today it is May 22nd, I think. As a bit of an introduction here, I am an Idaho gardener. I'm in zone 6A, 6B. Our last frost was May 12th, so this is now about 10 days later, and I still have not planted my frost tender plants out into the garden. I did direct sow some things, but all of my tomatoes, peppers, and like a smorgasbord of flowers, they're still in my greenhouse. So tonight is the, the low temp is supposed to be like 39 or 40. Um, and then after that, we should be good. So today I figured I would go out to the garden, prep all of my planting holes, um, like dig the holes to put tomatoes and peppers in and stuff like that. I just do a lot of prep because I have a really big garden and um, it's, it's some, backbreaking work out there. So I might also bring some packets of seeds out there to direct sow some things. Yeah! So tomorrow will be the big day of planting and today is going to be prep. Right now it is about noon um, and it's kind of overcast today which is very rare. This afternoon it's going to be pretty bright and sunny. So what I'm going to do um, I have been in the process of hardening off my greenhouse plants and all hardening off is, and it is essential, if you start plants indoors or in a greenhouse, you have to harden them off before you transplant them out into the garden. Now, the reason for this is that plants will get sunburned and you could risk losing a plant or stunting it if it gets burned too badly. So all hardening off is, is you slowly integrate your plants into direct sunlight. A lot of people do this uh, different ways. Some people will take a week, some people will take three days, some people will leave them out, you know, an hour at a time, and like you increase like one hour day one, day two is two hours, day three is three hours, etc. For me, what I like to do is I have trees over by my greenhouse, and there are some spots where it's a mix of shade and sun, and I'll just leave my plants out and kind of scoot them throughout the day to follow that shade and sun shadow. This will be day three, and that's typically enough for me. Um, I've, I've had good luck with that in the past. Oh, that sun came out. So the sun is deciding to peek through the clouds now and again. It'll be like this until this afternoon, and then it's just bright. If you can see behind me, I did plant some flowers yesterday. I got these just at, oh jeez, I got these at just a big box store. I can't remember what all I got, but they're, I think they're very lovely. I was going for a pink, white, and yellow color palette here, um, and I just think they look very beautiful. So I got these done yesterday, and they're just starting to perk up uh, really nicely now. So let's head back to the greenhouse around the house here and we will start moving those plants into the sun and shade. Yesterday I had all my plants out in the grass right here and I was just sitting in my chair watching my plants in the breeze. So here's the greenhouse. This is the greenhouse in all of its beauty. This is the most lush it will be um, because tomorrow I will start planting all of these really big plants out. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on in here. So here's everything. Oh gosh, I don't, let me count trays real quick. One, two, three. I think there's about 16 trays here, give or take. Hardening off the first couple of times was a little bit harsh, probably just a little bit too much direct sun. Um, and some of these leaves are a little sunburnt, which I will show you. So a few 
Uh, leaves over here, they're a little bit sunburnt. Um, I mean, they're really not that bad though. Here, I'll get this one. So this tomato plant right here probably has about the worst of sunburn. And so like this leaf down here, you can really see that yellowing and brown. Um, a little bit up top. Uh, really nothing in the crown or the new growth right here. Um, there's actually some flowers, uh, which I'll pinch those off in a second. But so if you get sunburn down at the bottom of your plant, uh, it's not a really big deal because I'm probably going to prune these leaves off anyways and bury this plant all the way up to here. Yeah. So sunburn at this level is not a big deal. And again, as long as your crown looks good, you're going to be totally fine. Your plant's going to be fine. Um, it's going to grow to be a nice, beautiful, big, healthy plant. And then another thing you'll see happening when you start to harden them off is that these leaves, when they harden off, they'll develop a waxy cuticle, which is just like, um, like its own sunblock, really. Um, and these leaves will get a little bit darker, kind of like a little bit of a suntan, but yeah. So we are now currently hardening all of these off and they all look pretty darn good. If these plants will be in the ground by tomorrow, one thing I want to do today is also pinch off any flower heads, like on the tomatoes and peppers. So there are a few flowers in here and I just want to make sure that they're not trying to develop fruit right now when they only have like a small cup of soil. I'm going to pinch these flowers right now and I'll just show you real quick. It's so simple and easy if this is something that you want to do. Um, I've heard that pinching flowers encourages more root development and for the plant to be established and healthy once you put it into the ground. Um, it's not necessary. You can leave the flowers on if you want to. This is just something that I do and that I've had great success with. So you do you. I'm just going to show you guys what I do. So. I just saw some flowers somewhere. These are mostly the cherry tomatoes and they're looking really good. Um, very nice, vigorous plants. And yeah, like right there, that's a little bit of sunburn, but they can, they'll pull through. Oh, here it is. So this little guy right here, he's got some pretty well-developed flowers. So this is the Ida Gold variety. This is one of the Idaho heirloom tomatoes that was created in the 1960s by the University of Idaho. Um, this plant, the Ida Gold specifically, is one that I've been so excited about growing this year. This is my first year growing I any Idaho heirlooms. So this is, um, I'm gonna baby these plants. I'm very excited about these ones. Uh, but again, I don't want them setting fruit yet, and I've heard that it is an early variety. So seeing flowers right now, that's pretty good. Um, that shows me that this plant really is early and wanting to set fruit because that's what it was bred and made for. So this little Ida Gold, all we're gonna do, you don't want to top the plants, um, at least not right now, like maybe in August when they're like seven feet tall. But for the flowers, we're just going to pinch off like the flower stem. So right here. And that's that. There looks like there's just a few more. So like, I wouldn't want to pinch it down here. I mean, you could and it would live, but I want these to keep growing um, off of the main stalk. So again, I'm just gonna pinch all these little flowers off. Here's another flower set. And then just a few more. There we go. So now this flower doesn't have any more blooms on it and it will continue to grow up and grow its roots down instead of focusing on putting its energy towards fruit. Gosh, these tomatoes are massive. Every year, I kind of like to make note about which started plants do very well for me and that are just super vigorous and healthy and wonderful. Something that I can grow well in the greenhouse and it's just good for the timing and everything. So I am going to show you guys the best tomato plant that I've got out here that just looks the healthiest. And this is for my record as well. 
I think it's going to be this one. And of course, this is a classic heirloom. This is a Cherokee purple. Oof, these roots are really in there. They must have all meshed in the... Oh, it's a little top heavy. So this here is a Bootstrap Farmer 3-inch cup. And this bad boy is very to here. You get the full, full point. So I'd say from the roots all the way up here, this is probably about two feet. Um, and his, the stalk is just really thick and beautiful. He's got wonderful little root hairs. Uh, his branches are pretty horizontal. Um, if they were all like stretching up vertically, that can like tell you that these plants weren't getting enough sun. And like we can kind of see like this one is pretty vertical, but you know, most of them are sort of sticking out horizontally. So that's a good sign. Uh, this is a, just a great looking plant. And I just barely see the start of some flowers. Um, I'm gonna just wait to pinch those until I know exactly what I'm pinching on this plant. But yeah, Cherokee purple. This is, that's a good, that's a good plant. So I'm not gonna prune these bottom leaves just yet. I'll wait till tomorrow. And I will show you guys when I'm planting these into the ground, how I prune and plant. Just did another quick once over and I spotted some more flowers over here. This little guy, he's kind of a big guy. It's oh, okay. So that right there is a faciated blossom. This is also called cat facing and you can kind of tell that there's uh, probably maybe two or three tomatoes in this one flower like they're conjoined so we're gonna pinch him off and that's that is a nice big flower i don't mind faciated blossoms or cat face tomatoes because they are nice and big um if they're like really gnarly bad gross looking flowers or tiny fruit i'll pinch them off because they're you know you might get a couple good slices out of there but usually they're bad just checking. Here's another one. And another. Yeah, these plants are definitely ready to be planted in the ground, which is going to be tomorrow. You're fine. So all these plants here, oh my gosh, I'd say there's a, at least 500 different plants that I've got here. Um, at least, if not more, so. That's a pretty good greenhouse year for me, guys. It really is. I figured I'd sit down and take a couple more sips of coffee. Um, just watch my plants and watch the sunshine and where it's going to hit them as far as hardening them off. Eventually this evening, this riparian zone here, there's like the creeks right behind here. Um, but the sun will go this way and the riparian zone will shade and partially shade where these plants are sitting right now. Uh, overcast days like this are just so perfect for hardening off like this it, this worked out great for me so I'm also thinking about what I want to direct so when we head out into the garden uh, I think I'm gonna grab like all my squash seeds and I found those melon seeds that I said I would find it's only like a week later but I've got those uh, cantaloupe melon seeds to finish up the melon patch in the garden I think I'll plant the winter squash and pumpkins and I'll, I'll just bring my whole case out into the garden this afternoon and just kind of sift through it and just start planting seeds everywhere. I gotta, oh gosh, it's, this is probably seriously going to be like a two or three day project planting out like all the direct sowing seeds uh, just because there's a, there's a ton. Like I'm just thinking about it now and I'm like, I've got corn and sunflowers and other direct sow flowers and different herbs and it's gonna be a lot yeah so i'm getting a little ambitious uh right now sitting in my garden chair looking at my plants but seriously though this next week is going to be some serious work back breaking work but i'm excited for it i really am okay let's go get the seeds from the house and then we will head out to the garden and start prepping and planting. 
I figured I'd do a quick little tour right now before we plant all of the frost tender things. Just as kind of like what a eh, basic bare bones kind of garden is right now. Because uh, this space is going to change so much in like a week. So let's just do a quick walk through and then we will start uh, prepping all of the planting holes. So I've been doing some serious weeding. This wheelbarrow is full of just weeds. I started here yesterday and all of this, that's all weeds, uh, with a few like sunflowers and or zinnias, um, volunteers popping through there. So like for here, I've got my lavender plants, there's four. And then I went ahead and selectively left just a few of the sunflowers that are popping through. And I will just do the exact same thing down this long garden bed, which is the garden bed that I am dedicating specifically to flowers. And then we can kind of see right here, not the hose deal, but all of these gladiolus bulbs started to sprout in this uh, line that we did right here. And I noticed some that we did in the middle trellis right over here are sprouting as well. Behind us, we've got the lovely row of garlic. Uh, I believe it's hardneck. Not sure the exact variety because I just bought it as like the organic bulb at the grocery store. So we have just regular hardneck garlic up front and then elephant garlic towards the back. And then there are just some like leftover onions and leeks that I left to flower this year because I wanted one, the seeds to save for next year, and then two, because they're beautiful and I love the, the big allium flower heads. So that's this first bed. And these first one, two, three deeper beds here, these are all gonna have the tomatoes in them, um, which is why I made them a little bit deeper to be able to plant those tomato stems down. Chrysanthemum, that's on its third year, I think. Third year chrysanthemum right there. And there is actually, I don't know if you can kind of see this wispy asparagus, but there's some asparagus. And then a second year snapdragon that I bought last year. And there's two of them. One is a lot bigger than the other. That's the second bed. The third bed, the third bed here is empty again, except for a very select few sunflowers and the tarragon, which is this bush right here. And then of course, there's a trellis down at the end and that is planted with pole beans and some sweet peas that are not like very big yet, but there are sweet peas on there and I guess they will just kind of weave in with the pole beans. Walking down, tarragon. The fifth bed here is attached to a trellis and then there's another trellis to the next bed um, these guys, I believe I'm planting cucamelons on and eh, something else. I'll figure it out. But this bed has snapdragons, which are bright yellow, uh, a little asparagus patch. And then there are three plants of sage, like culinary sage, which is, I cut those suckers down like a long time ago and they're just like growing and they're sending off a bunch of more uh, sprouts or reseeded or something. I don't know. Sage. Moving back down to the next bed. So through here, I'm leaving these onions to go to seed as well. There are two big patches of sunflowers, I think. Sunflowers or zinnias. I can never tell the two apart until they get like bigger. And then we've got oregano and another little spring onion. And then again, trellis at the bottom is uh, planted with Chinese red noodle beans. Moving on. This bed I haven't quite finished weeding, so this is all gonna go. Um, and then this here is the leftover rutabaga that uh, is just flowered out. I've been pulling these out and giving them to my chickens for chicken feed. And these flowered out rutabagas are covered in pollinators, honeybees, um, just everything. I haven't seen aphids on them too bad yet, um, but I am definitely going to try to pull these all out before the aphids come and reproduce and create a, a much bigger problem. 
this is kind of what all brassicas look like when they go to seed and they develop these little pods kind of like if you can see those these pods will get a lot bigger and these pods are what carries the seeds so it's just like a big sea of yellow flowers here which is really beautiful oh there's aphids i just spotted the aphids we'll have to walk around to the other side all right right here oh oh they're disgusting okay well i'm gonna come back and pull this out and give it to my chickens asap all right i thinned just a few out and for those of you that don't know this is what a rutabaga root looks like the chickens don't eat this but they love eating the leaves and the flowers off these plants okay moving on Coming to the end of the bed, I've got these huge bushes of bachelor buttons, and these guys are just beautiful. They're loaded with buds. All of these have buds on them. And this space is pretty big. It's um, four foot across by, I don't know, probably about four or five feet coming this way. Hi, baby. And they're probably about two and a half or three feet tall. You can see they're kind of bigger than Booth back there. But yeah, these bachelor buttons, they are, are gorgeous. And there's been ladybugs on them. I'm pretty sure those are ladybugs, not Japanese beetles. I'll have to do a, another ID again. I always have to look up the IDs. So next to the bachelor buttons is the last trellis in the walkway, and these are planted with sweet peas and I think just Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans. So on, on both sides of this trellis are sweet peas and Kentucky Wonders. So finishing up this bed, we've got the regular peas that I planted along this trellis that I made out of sticks. So everyone, this was a free trellis, and I've got various lettuces and mustards um, whatever planted all in between and it looks like I've had a little critter come in here and eat down all the lettuces that I like that are my favorite and I'm not super thrilled about that so like this one got eaten too that one got eaten this entire row um, this is new growth. This is probably about a week old. I think a marmot or a rock chuck got in here and just ate these down. Um, yeah, not happy about that. But they're bouncing back. These peas need to start grabbing onto these trellises. Because they're not doing a very good job. Come on, they're tall enough. And then just an extra Swiss chard that had overwintered and is just doing great. Looks like it's starting to flower out up top, getting ready to. Then at the back end, um, next to the melon patch, and this is potatoes and there will be corn. This is our first onion bed that we had planted together. And they are very sturdy little plants now. Yeah, they're doing really good. Coming back, this is the melon patch that we had planted not too long ago. I've been watering it in, and I checked it just the other day, and I thought I saw one melon sprout. We'll hop up on here. So nothing, not too much yet. Oh, here it is. So here's our first little melon sprout. Just a wee little dude here. But we're going. We're going. And walking this way. We've got our potatoes, which are coming up. I don't know if you can kind of see the lines here. I did end up burying them a little bit with some more soil and they just popped right through. So our potatoes are doing really well. Checking on our container potatoes. So these hard containers at the back of the garden, these are filled with the huckleberry gold potatoes that I got locally. Um, they're like a, I think they're an Idaho heirloom as well. They started sprouting too, and this is what they look like. So the next step here is I will put some more dirt in here and let these stolons grow up to the top of the pot. 
So just every, I don't know, maybe once a week or so, I will just add some more soil on top and let these potatoes grow to the top of the containers. So there's the first one. It looks like we're about to have some sprouts pop out of there. Same with this one. I can kind of see the soil bubbling up. And this one looked like it came up and maybe got a little bit of frost damage on him. Coming to the front of the potato patch with our grow bag containers. I looked in here yesterday and I didn't see any sprouts, but these guys were filled with, um, the potatoes I used here were store-bought red skin potatoes. So they just might take a little bit longer. Yeah, I don't see anything in there yet. Turning around, we've got just a giant flowered out rhubarb plant. So I don't love rhubarb. Um, I enjoy rhubarb, like strawberry rhubarb pie, um, but it's not like I have that all the time. Just like, you know, whenever my grandma would make it or something. So this rhubarb, it's not a red variety. The stalks stay green. And this, I have been trying to tear out this rhubarb plant for three years now. Um, it was planted here before we moved here and it's just going strong. So coming down from the rhubarb, these are all the extra onions that I had planted out that took me weeks to plant out. Um, these back ones, I believe, are, are the Elsa Craigs, which are supposed to get really, really big. And they just look like real, really nice and healthy. The other ones, it looks like they might have had some frost damage and kind of got nipped towards the ground but I still see a bunch of little onion stalks over there. So I'm gonna give them just a little bit of time and see what happens. And then this is our strawberry patch. So like this plant, for instance, I see all these little babies, but they definitely look a little bit weird. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. This is all the mint, and this thing has just exploded with growth. Yesterday I was in here rubbing this and I just put my face in it to smell it. It smells really good. Oh, this mint smells so good. You can just sit here and do this all day. Oh, I love tea. I think this is all mostly spearmint. So spearmint must have just taken over. Um, this might be a little bit of strawberry mint over here, but the spearmint's just kicking butt. And then the lemon balm is this nice. Oh, that's really nice. All right, so that's it for the big tour of everything. So now let's start to prep. So right now I've got 40 holes dug and they're all just on one side of these trellises. What I ended up doing last year, which I will inevitably do again this year, is I will plant all the plants, that, all the tomato plants I really want in these holes that I just dug. And then if I have leftovers, which I will, um, I will just go ahead and plant them on the other side of the trellis. Um, not too many because the first year I, um, planted all these garden beds. I had 96 tomatoes and they did okay. They were a little crowded, um, but like I was able to do it. So if I need to, I can definitely have like 60 to 80 plants in here. But for right now, I just did 40. Hey, Mimi. How are you? How are you? Hey. It is now evening time and I ended up getting a lot of stuff done. I did put the camera down just so I can put my earbuds in and just get to work. Well, everybody, thank you for hanging out with me in the garden today. I know I did not plant everything um, seed wise, but I did make some headway. I did a lot. So I'm thinking this entire next week, I'm just gonna be out here every day after work, planting out my tomatoes and peppers and flowers and then just I'm gonna keep direct sowing as much as I can 
once everything pops up, I'll go ahead and do another quick little tour of everything that I planted. Um, who knows if I'll have to reseed anything or not, but yeah, it was a very beautiful day. It just, it feels so nice to be out here. It's one of those things that's good for the soul. Yeah, I can feel it. My body hurts a little bit just from pulling weeds and planting and bending over and crouching all day. Yeah, put in a lot of work, but I mean, I feel like I'm already seeing so much reward out of all the hard work that I did last year. Like I've said in some previous videos, I don't really have a mentor in gardening. Um, I'm 26 years old and this is my third year having a huge garden like this. And um, if you want to be one of those wonderful people who gives me some advice, I would really appreciate that from you. So I hope you guys can get out into your gardens and just enjoy outside time and growing food and beautiful things. It's definitely that time of year where it's nice enough outside that I'm just gonna be out as much as I can. Sitting on the back porch, in the garden, playing with the chickens. Yeah, that to me is a peaceful evening. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.